This is Motley Fool Answers. I'm Allison Southwick, and I'm joined, as always, by Robert Brokamp, personal finance expert and financial advisor. What's your designation again? I am a certified financial planner pr- practitioner. How's so, that? so that sounds. I, it's I kind of you. impressive. I'm Ed, ki- I'm kind of a big deal. I am impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, the holidays. It's a great opportunity to eat too much, drink too much, and have awkward conversations with family members. But those conversations can be important and productive. So today we're going to give you five conversation starters that will help you and your family members to get on better footing financially. Again, these could be painful, but at least more productive than sitting through your uncle's bourbon-fueled rants about, well, everything. We're also going to go on the hunt for holiday traditions we can steal from other families. All that and more on this week's episode of Motley Fool Answers. The holidays are upon us. Happy I know holidays, this. Everybody. I know this because Starbucks tells me. <laughs> that's how you know when the holidays are around is when you can look at their menu or go into a store and there's just red stuff everywhere. It's very exciting. So if you're like us, you'll be traveling many miles to spend time with family, watching football games no one cares about, and eating nut-covered cheese balls. It's a fun time for everyone. (laughs) And when you're tired talking about religion, sex, and politics with your family, there's even more awkward conversations you can have about money. They're more important and probably less scarring. Well, I don't know, because it could involve death, and that could be scarring. Oh, no, these conversations are definitely going to involve death. Yeah. So yeah, the idea is that your family, extended or otherwise, is all coming together around the holidays, and this is a great opportunity to have some serious conversations about money. And so we've got five conversations here, I think. Maybe four. Four and a bonus. Four and a bonus. How's that? You're welcome, listeners. All right, the first one. So how we're going to introduce these is we're going to broach the subject in a way maybe one of your less tactful family members would do it and then we'll give you um we'll talk about it and then we will give you a more refined and thoughtful way to bring up the subject which is what you would do anyway, right? Of course. So, first up, we've got cousin Debbie Downer. You're all going to die someday, so you better have a will and a good executor. That's kind of a downer. That's that's your cousin Debbie Downer. That's how she would introduce the topic. And, and at please the table. and please pass the cranberry sauce, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably full full of cancer it's, and it's, it's going to kill you. It's going to poison you. All right. So why is it important to talk about having a will and a good executor around the family table? Well, first of all, if if you don't have a will, then state law will determine who gets what, which may not be exactly what you want to happen. And also, it'll take longer for the property to get transferred much higher chance of having to pay lawyers, and much higher chance of family strife down the road, which will make the next Thanksgiving even more uncomfortable. Um, and, and there's a practical part of this, too. Any lack of estate planning on the part of your relatives probably will become your problem in some way or another. Uh, you might inherit less. You might have to pay lawyers, increase time, more hassle. So it's just better to make sure everyone is on the same page when it comes to this, like everyone got a will, everyone, everything cool, we all set. Now, whether or not there should be like an unveiling of the will, like everyone gets a copy, <laughs> is debatable. And there are people who do this. You know, the, the parents will make the copy of the wills and they give it out to each kid so that everyone knows what's going on. Everyone's cool with it and they can work on any problems. Sometimes um, kids don't get the same amount. Some parents might decide to leave more to a kid because that kid was more helpful in their older age or. Um, needed more help, maybe the other kids were more financially successful and they feel like this other kid should get more money. Whatever the reasons, it's good to get that out in the open. However, sometimes, and I've read plenty of stories about this too from lawyers and financial planners, when you do unveil everything, it creates so much strife, you really can't resolve it. So it's kind of better to sort of test the waters, just sort of bring up the topic a little bit. And you might be able to get an, an indication of like, okay, this is going to be a problem if you are the person writing your will and you're going to be leaving the property. And you can actually account for that in your estate plan. So a will actually becomes public record. So if I leave something to these people, everyone will know it eventually. If you put property in a trust instead, that stays private. So that's how some people avoid problems. They kind of (laughs) bequeath stuff to people without any other people knowing. Um, Also then, you might also figure out that, you know what, I need a no contest clause in my will. And that's the classic, you know, you get this $50,000. Um, if you challenge the will and you don't win, you get nothing. And you hope that hopefully that's an incentive 
to just make people happy. And talk a little bit about the role of the executor. The executor, it's a, it's a pretty big role because the executor's job is to, first of all, gather all the legal documents, the wills and the trusts, um, pay off any bills of the estate. So it, just because you die doesn't mean you don't owe that money. The estate has to pay up those bills. The, if there's property, it has to be appraised and valued. That's the executor's job. And then, after all that, the executor, executor has to distribute all the property. This whole process can take six to 12 months. Ugh. Um, and it takes a lot of time. So every state has mandated a way for executors to get paid, and they should get paid. Unfortunately, that also can cause problems because that money comes out of the estate, and, and the other heirs might see that that executor wrote a check to him or herself. But it's, it's a reasonable expense. You want to make sure you get a good executor because uh, you want someone who's detail-oriented, a lot of paperwork, a lot of things to keep track of, someone ideally who lives nearby or in the state of the person who passed away because a lot of this stuff is governed by state law. You have to go to the courts and, and all that stuff. And frankly, you have to choose someone who has the time to do it. Um, so it's a good conversation to have with everyone around or at least you you know, p- pull people into a corner somewhere and have these <laughs> discussions um, just because you want to make sure you've got the right person and they're willing to do it. And is an executor like a, a lawyer or is it probably shouldn't be someone in your family? No, it, ge- it generally okay. is someone in your family. And it oh. can be more than one person. Um, like many things, the more people you name, the more the chance there is they won't agree on things. Um, but it doesn't have to be a lawyer. It just has to be someone who is fair-minded, detail-oriented, um, and can get the job done. I'm at this moment going through like all of my friends in my mind, like a Rolodex. <laughs> <laughs> like my I, my older sister is the executor on my mom's estate, and that is the right choice. I am the executor on my father-in-law's estate. I don't know if you made the right choice. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, to my darling friend Kristen, who listens to the podcast. I've got my eye on you for a very special job, <laughs> and it pays. So that's fun, too, right? Yeah. So we also have a better way to bring this up, because these are tough conversations to have. And for this one, you're going to want to go with the adulting is hard, am I right, method? Wherein you say something like, hey, I just completed my will. Ugh, what a pain, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone chimes in, and those who don't, you know. You know. You know. And the other aspect of that, too, is then you say, and by the way, if something happens to me, this is where you can find my will, this is where you find my life insurance policies, and you can find all my important paperwork. So they know where to go, but then that's it. And you're going to say, oh, and if something happens to you, where should, where I, should I go? Because you're not looking well today. 